Today we're going to show you five essential knots. But wait, don't turn off the video just yet. I know what you're thinking. You've seen it before. All the articles and videos that say the five essential sailing knots are the same ones. Besides, saying all a sailor needs to know is a few knots is like saying all a painter needs is a few colors to paint a masterpiece. But you only need three colors, right? Red, blue, yellow, the primary ones. True, but at the same time, don't you only need a few basic elements and then you can tie hundreds of knots? Like a bite, a loop, a hitch, a bend. The biggest reason that knots loosen, chafe, or seize is because of improper application. We're going to teach you five more essential knots that we use every day. We're using the word knot very loosely. In fact, the first one I'm going to show you is actually a bend, and then later we're going to show you a hitch. Let's take a look at the Zeppelin bend. What do you use when you want to extend the length of an anchor road by adding on another piece of rope? I hope you didn't say you use two bowlins. I've seen people do this before and this is a bad habit to get into because it creates a lot of chafe right here and it could chafe right through. I'm gonna show you the Zeppelin bend, which is my favorite bend and my favorite way to connect two anchor roads together. I like to call the Zeppelin bend the kissy fishy knot and here's why. Start by making a loop with the bitter end crisscrossing underneath the standing end. Then you're gonna make a second loop just in the opposite way with the bitter end crossing on top of the standing end. Then you're gonna stack the two loops on top of each other. Take the one with the bitter end on top, that's your top fish. The one with the bitter end on bottom, that's your bottom fish. Stack them on top of each other. The last thing that you need to do is wrap those bitter ends all the way around and pull it through the center. You kinda gotta work both sides. See that? And it looks good. And the last thing that's great about this knot, if you're using it as your anchor road and it does tighten down really hard, just like if you've got a really tight bowline or a square knot, all you have to do is break a knot's back and it's loose and you can untie it. Let's talk about the constrictor knot, which is one of my favorites. It's great for tying a bundle of wood together, constricts them, or around the end of a rope that's fraying. It can be a temporary whipping. Or we use it for the bucket handle, to tie a lanyard to the bucket. And it's really good for that because the lanyard doesn't slide on the bucket handle. Okay, so we go over the top of the bucket handle, come up on one side of the standing part, doesn't matter which side, but I like to go left first. Then I cross over the standing part, and up on the other side of the standing part, what I'm going to do is set up a little hole right here and tuck my end underneath the crisscross right there. So it's underneath that crisscross that I made. And pull on both ends and give myself a little bit of a tail here. And if I snug it up nice and tight, <clears throat> that is the constrictor knot. And you can see there's a lot of crisscrosses, which means there's a lot of friction in this knot. And the tighter you pull on it, the tighter it's going to pinch down on whatever you're constricting. You see how it's pinching there a little bit as I pull tight? This is how you tie a round turn in two half hitches. You're going to do a complete turn around your piling. That's your round turn. It kind of looks like there's two turns, but that's called round turn. And your half hitches always cross over the same direction and the same side. So I'm crossing over from left to right and on top of my standing line, that's one half hitch. The other half hitch is also going to go from left to right and on top of my standing line. That's two half hitches. The great thing about a round turn and two half hitches is that you can easily untie it even when it's under load. That's because the load is being dispersed through here as opposed to right on your knot. If you look here, the knot is actually pretty loose and I can easily untie that. This is really important when you're docking because you need to be able to free your dock lines without having to move the boat around. Some people say, oh, I can just grab my boat and pull it in. But sometimes if it's too windy or your boat's big, you can't do that at all. You've probably had a sheet override at some point on your winch, and that happens when the lines, the lines get crisscrossed and seized up. The other reason it can happen is because the lead isn't right to the winch, and that can mess things up too. If it's too high, you can get an override as well. This is really bad because once you lose control of your sail, because you can't adjust it, you can't let it out or bring it in, you lose control of your vessel. So here on the working side that's all caught up, we want to take a wrap around the line but towards the way we need to pull. We're going to be pulling in this direction because we want to make this part go slack so we can undo what's caught up on the winch. I do two wraps towards the way we want to pull, okay, and then I crisscross and I do sort of a locking hitch under here. 
okay? We've got two on the working side and one over here is a locking hitch. If I cinch this up nice and tight, I can now transfer the load in this direction. And you see how it's not sliding? Okay, now that we've got a rolling hitch on the sheet, we're gonna use this transfer line to transfer the load to a different winch. A couple of wraps at least, because it's a smaller line. So we've transferred the load successfully to this new line. And now it frees me up to work on this and get this override undone without worrying about my fingers or having the tension that is binding it. So I can get this guy undone. And you know, it's not a crazy situation anymore. It's a controlled situation, which is what you want everything to be. Okay, I've got it completely off. Now I'm ready to ease the tension off and transfer it back to the main winch. I'm gonna show you how to cleat a line. There are three things to think about when you're cleating a line. Number one, you should always be able to free a line under load. Number two, you don't want the line to get pinched. If you have the wrong lead and it's not a fair lead, then your line will get pinched on the cleat and it will be hard to take off. And number three, it should always look good. The first turn on your cleat should have a proper lead, meaning it should have an open V. Take a look here. This is an open V, the V with the cleat and the rope. This is an improper lead. This is a closed V. Even if I went like that, this is gonna pinch on this line. Okay, so let's do it right. You want your first turn to make the letter C around your cleat, then you do some figure eight wraps. And the last one, you do a locking hitch. You turn the line on itself over the horn, and these two lines lie side by side next to each other with a third line over top. Adding more locking hitches does not make your knot any stronger. If you need to have a lot of holding power, add more turns, but not more locking hitches. You wanna be able to easily undo your cleat, and if you've got the locking hitches down at the bottom of the stack, and that's where the load bearing hitch is, then that's gonna tighten down on itself and be really hard to undo. How many turns do you put around your cleat before you put the locking hitch on? Well, it depends on how much load you have. If it's a really light wind day and you've got a small boat, you only need to do a few, but if it's a really strong wind, the more turns you add, the more friction and the more holding power you have. A great cleat hitch can be easily undone or adjusted under any sort of load. Benji? Yeah? What's your favorite knot? My favorite knot is the constrictor knot and the rolling hitch. I like them because they're both really specific and they have specific uses. And what's your favorite knot? <laughs> My favorite knot is actually not a knot. It's a slippery hitch. I wrote an article all about it right here titled, The Knot You Never Knew You Needed. What's your favorite knot? <laughs>